Whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, I'm home in the studio. Yeah, so nice. I'm good. Yeah. Just uh, doing a run of interviews today. And uh, it's pretty busy. It's amazing. How many have you done so far? Uh, I don't know. 40, 50. <laughs> I don't know. And I, uh, I still have like. A few, but it's great because uh, like the, there's a lot of interest in the band now, so it's amazing because you have the perception that things are moving. So it's good. It's a good feeling. I mean, like uh, for me, it's a pleasure to do interviews. Like back in the days when they were like reading interviews, they were like extremely time consuming, especially for non like English like mother language speaker because you have to write it out and then you have to translate it and review it it's like a shitload of time to do it but like this with zoom it's like having um a chat with new friends every time so it's nice i dare yeah. say you would have you've probably been asked about godjura and you're feeling yeah it. yeah <laughs> it's been all anyone can talk about the last couple of days hey yeah, yeah. and also like uh there's a the fun fact is that there is a a petition to let us play like the, it's a petition about like um uh because the next uh, winter uh, uh, olympics is are, are going to be in uh, italy so they they are trying to to bring us to the opening uh you know to the opening event of the winter olympics i, I made a like a fun post because i'm um I'm a lot into mon mountaineering and also all the, you know, winter sports like skiing is one of my biggest passions. So as like, uh, you know, everybody around me like, hey, you should do it, you know, like it's uh, and uh, yeah, it would be fun. It would be fun. Yeah, but yeah. yes, everybody is talking about that. It's a, I think it's, it's a big step forward for the old metal community. You know, it's like such a big thing, you know. Well, it's the so. first time that in my life that I've ever seen metal being treated with a, any sense of legitimacy by, you know, the, by the mainstream media. You know, we've always yeah, they, ignored they them. Were like, they were treated like the others, you know? Mm. It's not like uh, you are like uh, the weirdos and uh, we give you like uh, two minutes. It's like, okay, this is a big event. And there are, it's a multi-gener event because you have uh, like artists from every genre and every style and whatever and uh and you are one of them you know just like the others like there's no real difference between you and celine dion or lady gaga it's like the same thing yeah. which is like w w that would be like it should be like that you know <laughs> but uh but yes like this genre is start it's um probably is uh, perceived in a different way, not just for the sounds, but also because he started as like a, re a revolutionary, you know, style of music, you know, a little bit like uh, like rock in the very beginning. So um, it's an, an extreme version of, of rock. So in a way, it's uh, I think it's normal that uh, the conservatives mind keep us a little bit, you know, apart, like Okay, yes, you can join the you can join the party, but for a few seconds uh, here and there, and probably we're gonna mock you, <laughs> something like that, you know. Uh, but uh, but now it's different because the audience is different, and uh, you know, it's uh, they cannot do much with that, you know. There's a f there's fucking hype behind metal. There's fucking hype behind these new bands, and uh, and they cannot control that, you know. Like if you have massive amount of people going to the shows massive amount of people requesting some kind of artist in different countries and like we just had the the, the ramstein show here in uh, in a big place and acdc played there and like such as like really 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 big like pop artists play the same place like uh insanely huge place and uh we're talking about uh, several, several uh, thousand, several, um, you know, like it was something like seven, uh, seventy thousand people. Inside, like yeah. seventy, one hundred thousand. It's like, I mean, 
when you have this kind of and it's it's Ramstein. I mean, like it's a big show and even non metalheads go there because it's such an entertaining show. But I mean, it's still metal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have double kick. They are they talk about stuff that you won't find in any other lyric in in music in general. I mean, yeah. so that's a good thing. You uh, so so would, would do you reckon Flesh God would and and Celine Dion? I could see it. I can see a collaboration coming. Maybe <laughs> do that. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> she can sing. She can sing. I mean, uh, you um, when you played in Brisbane in March, you played with a uh, a local death metal band called Snake Mountain. Um, did you get a chance to see their show at all? We checked, like, especially when there's like uh, this kind of tours. Um, Australia, for example, is uh, one of uh, these tours when uh, when you have to fly every day, so it's like almost no sleep. So hmm. uh, when it's like um, like uh, it, like an American tour or like a mainland tour, let's say like European tour, and you basically you you travel with the bus. You have time to sleep in the night, and uh, usually, you know, you have the whole day free. So there's much more chance to check out some bands. Like we tour many times with very nice bands, and I could check the full set every day. Uh, in this this type of tours is um, much more complicated because every minute you have, you have to try to rest because then after afterwards you have to play, and it's you know energy demanding. So it's uh, but sometimes I, uh, I have the chance to check one song or two songs uh, or hang out or just check the, the, the line check, you know, or the sound check. It's, uh, so it happens. And, uh, yeah, I remember that in Brisbane. And Br Brisbane was pretty fucked up for some technical issues that we had because, I don't know, something that, that they, the sound guy had some, something not going well, you know, at the very beginning. So they had to fix it a little bit even in the afternoon, but... It was such a great show, man. Yeah, awesome. And then there is a, we found also a cafe place with cats right there in front of the street. It's like a, a cat cafe. It's like <laughs> weird. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. Awesome. Uh, hey, the opera was inspired um, by your experiences in the aftermath of a climbing accident uh, back yeah. in 21. Yeah. Um, what did this whole experience kind of teach you about life? Oh, well, that it taught me a lot. Like it probably it's probably the thing that teached me the most in my life. Um I definitely became a better man after that because I could, you know, have a much more uh conscious uh conscious I have much more consciousness of myself and the world around me now which is uh something that um, uh in a way make me appreciate much more the whole life experience in general like from family to what i have how lucky i am uh and uh and when i talk about being lucky i'm not talking about you know not surviving an accident i'm talking about you know having the right people around having the right opportunities uh being born in a country which is not in war or that gives you the opportunities is also economical opportunities to you know grow your own project grow your own uh, like uh, passion make it uh, sometimes even make it a living out of it so it's something uh, that uh, for uh, for a long time I gave I gave it from granted I I always been a very you know sensitive and empathic guy so I've never like uh, truly gave it for granted. I, I would I would lie if I say, you know, before I was an asshole and now I'm a fucking, you know, saint. No, I'm saying that back in the days, for sure I was thankful and grateful for what was happening, what, what, what was happening in my life already. But uh, probably I couldn't really uh, appreciate and realize and probably even, let me use this word, quantify, quantify, how lucky I was, how big my things were, you know, how important and, uh, and uh, 
you know, extraordinary my life experience was till that day, you know. Now I have a totally different perception. So uh, the accident definitely uh, caused me a lot of injuries and a lot of pain and uh, probably, you know, it's uh, some stuff is going to stay with me f forever. And, uh, and of course, it was a negative event, but on the other side, it was a positive event because uh, without something like, without something like such a different uh, and, uh, you know, life changing experience, you never have the opportunity to really uh, face reality in, in the way I'm facing it now. So I'm very, in a way, thankful that happened because otherwise I would have missed this, you know, new life. So it's um, it's great. It's uh, I feel great now, even if I'm probably le like less, you know, in shape than before. Let's say <laughs> I'm a little bit screw with, with with some screws and scotch tape, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, held together with anti-inflammatories and rage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm, you know, able to do what I like, it's fine. Yeah. Have you since returned to climbing or did you, have you hung up your ropes? No, well, like I tried to, uh, like at the very beginning, like it was a little bit traumatizing at the, be at the beginning, but it's not the problem of highs or whatever. It's like that my, like the, the injuries, especially the bones injuries were like very severe. So I was very lucky that I found an equip, uh, a team, like a medical team that could, doctors that could really, fix it because at the at first it was it sounded it sounded like a much more desperate situation like at the very beginning they really wanted to cut my arm and it was like very bad you know mm -hmm. but in the end they figured it out like with some uh like uh plates titanium stuff going on and you know they did they, they tried they tried to to you know put together what was left and uh, it was luckily enough to make it work so the only thing I have to really, really have to be careful is um, I don't have to hit it too hard. The, 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 you know, the spots that have been fixed, like my right leg and my left arm are like pretty much, uh, you know, to, the, the bones are, they stay together with bone, with the, with the screws and wires. So it's, I have to, to be careful with that. But yes, in the, in a, like I'm not doing um, like mountaineering as I have, I've been done before. Like I'm hiking, I'm going to I go out to the mountain trekking, and yeah, some climbing I do it. But it's like sport climbing. I can go, for example, in the in the gym, like uh, climbing gyms or stuff like that. Yeah, that that's doable. Yeah. Everything else where you can really you know get hard, it's better to stay away now. I thought, uh, but I did a lot. I did. A, I did a lot in my life. I mean, like I, I've been doing that. Like I did it for so much time. So I just try to 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 keep to keep um, uh, to, to to go on. You know, with the, those kind of disciplines in the mountaineering, mountaineering thing. You know, like the like skiing and whatever that are more are the safest. Let's say so, because I don't want to put myself in the same situation and I don't want to put the people around me in that situation anymore. So that's why I'm, I'm more, you know, I'm also getting older. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the title I can never die seems a little ironic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ironic in a way. It's ironic. I mean, like it's ironic, but it's very true because, um, that song is about, um, who we are in life and uh, what we live afterwards. You know, when we're gone, what we leave is what basically what we've done. And uh, we have to be really sure that what we've done is something to be proud of. I mean, like when, when this happened and uh, I, I've seen, you know, especially in the first days, uh, I've seen a lot of um, uh, loss of hope. Uh, by doctors, by my parents, by everybody, my wife, you know, they, and I, I, I kind of had the perception that I was dead, you know, and I was like, man, you know, this kind of things is probably much more, um, it's much more severe, much more uh, uh, like bad than what I thought. So 
uh, let me let me let me have a like let me let me rethink everything and let me have a thought about my life about who I was how I was what I'm living was I a good husband was I a good a good father was I a good son you know like I started questioning myself because today I'm in this in this bed and I can I can still you know be here but imagine if I wouldn't you know so I would have been proud of what I've done what is the last thing I told to my wife or my mother, you know, this kind of things started to, I started to travel a little bit in there. I started to tripping a little bit mentally. And um, so after like this considerations, I started thinking, yeah, well, you know what, you know, like if I have to, to, to make a sum of everything in my life, I mean, probably I'm, I did much more, I did m much more good things than bad. So in the end, the balance is positive, and that is that is great. And the cool thing is that whatever I've done, you know, uh, I I wouldn't need to change it because it was, in my opinion, good. It was honest. It was I put a lot of um, of um, of energy, efforts, dedication, and determination in what I've done, and and everything was done honestly all the time, and. Uh, and that is something that uh, that stays. So uh, even um, even if I was gone now, I would have like I, I should have been proud of what I've done. So it's like uh, when I said I can never die is is just like that. You know, when you do something, you know, even if you if you die, you really can't. I mean, like some stuff is staying. It's not doesn't belong to you anymore. Uh, for an artist, it's a different thing because it's even uh, it's even more because you are releasing material and this material is something that stays, splits. You know, your 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 life as an artist and your art are two different things because your art belongs to the people as soon as as it's released. So. One uh, and a lot of people identify the artist with the art they have, just like memory. Like uh, a lot of people, it identifies somebody uh, with the biggest memory, with the most important memories they have of of a guy or or, or uh, you know or or something, and uh, and that is uh, and that is very you know it's a very strong has a very strong meaning because a lot of times we just don't think enough about what we're doing. We just underestimate the consequences of what we're doing or what we, what, you know, what we leave to the others. It's like, yeah, but tomorrow I'm going to fix it. No. Or yeah, today I behave like a shitty man, but tomorrow I'm going to be a good one. You never know if there's a tomorrow. That's the problem, you know. <laughs> like, and if that tomorrow is enough to erase everything that you've done so far. So, yes, in the end, we cannot never die. We, we can't. We can't. We want sometimes, but we can't. We are gonna stay. <laughs> and uh, if you have some kind of notoriety you're going to stay in the minds of many people. So you have to be careful when you do your stuff because you're going to affect their life with your art. It must be a hell of a thing to, you know, release an album and go halfway, go to travel to the other side of the world and see some kids who you have never met, you've never even been in the same continent as, and yeah. they're singing your words back to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying, you know, like what, before it was like um, before the accident, this kind of things, uh, I was perceiving this kind of things like, uh, oh, yeah, this, this is success because uh, I've done something that is so cool that somebody from the other side of the world, you know, appreciate it and, uh, you know, gives me some like such strong feedback that it even knows the words and comes to the show and uh, you know it's part of it, which is cool, but it's not like uh, perceiving as a magic. Now, for me, this kind of things are much more than success. It's magic. 
it's something like almost unexplainable because especially with this with this kind of songs which are like um in, in which i put my life you know i put myself and uh, see all this um all these people uh you know in a way identify on the lyrics with the lyrics uh like uh you know, relieving their own experiences throughout the songs. That is fucking magic. That is insane. You know, it's not like, uh, like the, this, for example, the, the, the accident itself is perceived as a loss. And there's people that uh, had the same um, mood and feelings and emotions losing someone or losing something that was so important or having something like uh, um, something huge happening in their life that changed the life completely and uh and that is makes me super proud and uh, i feel the responsibility of that and it's much more than just being a successful singer that wrote the lyrics and somebody else you know knows it you know it's like okay i wrote something that is important for their lives and that is magic <laughs> it's insane because i'm living here as you said and 12 hours you know time the 12 hours time uh frame away from here i don't know how to translate it in english you know time, 12 hours time zones away yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody else that uh that can like that had has the same experience and we share this song now it's my, my story is there, but the, also his or her story is there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wow, you know? So. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's like um, uh, a lot of people say that my, my interviews are like therapy, therapy sessions. I love <laughs> so it. I'm sorry about, sorry about that. No, don't you dare apologize. This is the kind of stuff I love. I love getting, I love going down rabbit holes with this kind of stuff. Mate, um, but thank you very much for your time. This has been awesome. Um, I'm so glad to hear that you are, you know, you are doing well. You are thriving. Congratulations on your, you just had a, a, a child recently. I don't know how yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Kind of it was. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, we, we, we have a new, uh, we, we just have a new arrival. <laughs> Amazon just delivered the new uh, new package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's uh, one month one month old now. Yeah, Super I smart. remember that. <laughs> Coffee. You can all get one in. Yeah. Coffee helps. <laughs> Coffee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So, yeah, awesome. You can tell. All right, mate. Thanks very much okay. for your time. Thank you, man. Thank you. No. See you in Brisbane. Goodbye. Bye.